What's up everybody, Brad here. In this video, I'll be going over some common home theater terminology and what it all means. So if you're in the market for new gear, you'll know what these terms mean. Or if you just wanna impress all your friends with your newfound knowledge, you can do that too. So you may be new to home theater as a hobby or even a seasoned home theater enthusiast that just needs a slight refresher on some of these terms, especially the newer ones that are kind of coming out all the time. Well, this video will go into basic explanations of these terms as well as examples here and there where I feel like they fit in. With that said, if you're new to the channel, I post home theater and gaming related content every single week, such as product reviews, technical breakdowns of video games, and videos exactly like the one you're watching right now. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you'll never miss out when I upload a new video. Also, there's some Amazon affiliate links in the description below, and I get a small commission from these when you click on one and buy anything on Amazon. This doesn't cost you anything and helps support the channel. So I do a lot of research for these videos to make sure I give you guys the most accurate information as possible, but I am human, I make mistakes, and sometimes things do slip through the cracks. If that's the case and I get something wrong, then please leave a comment in the section below letting me know, or if I just completely skip over a basic term that I maybe forgot completely about, let me know in the comment section below as well. So without further ado, let's get into the list of terms and what they mean. Now this is not going to be a definitive list. Uh, this is just some common terms that I come across all the time and I will be using my trusty phone because I can't memorize all this stuff. I mean, what do you think I am, a magician? So let's start out with some general terms that you'll see pretty much everywhere you go, uh, especially in regards to television, sound systems, and stuff like that. So HDMI is a big one. HDMI 1.4, 2.0, and 2.1. You'll see these thrown around a lot. HDMI 1.4 was introduced in about 2009 and is on the lower end of the spectrum now. It has a bandwidth, and hold on uh, to that term there for a second because I will cover that in the next term, the HDMI bandwidth. The HDMI bandwidth of 1.4 is 10.2 gigabytes per second, and it only supports resolutions up to 4K at 24 frames per second. Now with Blu-ray and 4K UHD, HDMI 2.0 was introduced and is 18 gigabytes per second bandwidth and supports up to 4K resolutions at 60 frames per second. With HDMI 2.1 on the horizon that you'll see a lot, the bandwidth has gone up to 48 gigabytes per second and supports 4K at 120 frames per second, 8K at 60 frames per second, and resolutions up to 10K. And you'll see the HDMI 2.1 being touted a lot on the next generation consoles, like the Xbox Series X and PS5. So moving on to HDMI bandwidth, like I mentioned earlier, basically this is how much information the HDMI cable can carry between uh, the device and either the receiver or the, uh, the display. So the more bandwidth that the cable has, the more information it can pass, which is why you need more information for things like 8K resolution and 10K resolution. You'll see this thrown around too a lot is a high speed HDMI cable. So in order to get 4K 60, you will need a certified high speed cable from a place like Monoprice. And the reason for that is they have been certified to pass the required bandwidth to get the maximum signal output for that cable. So moving on to the next term, ARC and eARC. ARC stands for audio return channel. Basically it's an HDMI cable that goes from your display to your soundbar or receiver. And over that cable, uh, video can be sent to the display while audio is also returned from the display. So it's an audio output. Instead of needing a separate cable, for your display to get audio to your receiver, it can just all go over that single cable. Now eARC is uh, kind of tied to HDMI 2.1, and that's going to allow for full resolution audio signals to be played through it like Dolby True HD and DTS Master Audio, full resolution audio. Uh, so that means you won't get any type of degradation there. MLP is another one thrown around a lot. It basically means main listening position. It's where you always sit when you play video games or watch movies or listen to music. HDR is another popular one, high dynamic range. Uh, it basically means brighter highlights and deeper blacks without sacrificing detail, as well as increasing the color range and detail information in that signal. Now, SDR is something you'll hear occasionally, just 
it means standard dynamic range. It's basically what we've been watching on TVs for years and years with a uh, limited brightness and limited black levels. Moving on to display terminology, uh, refresh rate is a big one. Uh, basically it's how many times a display is refreshed every single second. So you'll see 120 Hertz panels and 240 Hertz panels talked about a lot. Basically a 120 Hertz panel is refreshed 120 times a second, 240 Hertz panel, 240 times a second, so on and so forth. Another term thrown around a lot is soap opera effect and or motion interpolation. They're essentially the same thing. Basically, they're a setting on the television that takes an input signal and tries to add fake frames in between all the real frames, which tries to smooth out motion and reduce motion blur. But what ends up happening is you get artifacting, first of all, if, if the setting is set too high. And secondly, it starts to look like a soap opera, like a made for TV movie. Contrast ratio is another big one that basically refers to the ratio between the highest bright point of the display and the lowest dark point of the display. So you'll see this referenced a lot as like 1000 to one, 10,000 to one or 5,000 to one. Basically the higher the number here, the better edge lit display, which is exactly how it's sounds. A lot of TVs will have LEDs right behind the display panel to illuminate it when it needs to do that. Uh, whereas edge lit displays have lights on the edges of the panel. So it might have it on all of the edges or it might just have it on two. So like the top and bottom or the left and right. FALD, F-A-L-D, this stands for full array local dimming. And basically it's numerous zones behind a display panel that will illuminate and dim depending on the content that's on there independently of each other. HDR10 is another big one uh, to the base HDR on every single disc, regardless if it has Dolby Vision or another HDR format on there, which I will touch on in a minute. This will work with any HDR TV and it basically increases the range between the darkest blacks and the highest uh, white point of the display. Dolby Vision is the next term uh, and it's a similar principle to HDR10, uh, except it can dynamically adjust just for each scene or even uh, frame by frame. And it also reads the display's HDR capabilities so it can maximize the HDR uh, picture quality. Uh, it also does support higher color detail and information than any other HDR format. HDR10 Plus is another HDR format and it's similar to Dolby Vision in that it can dynamically adjust the HDR for each scene or frame by frame, uh, but it can't read the display's capabilities to maximize that HDR picture quality. One of the other popular HDR formats is HLG. It means hybrid log gamma. And basically it's a form of HDR intended for broadcast. This will just take an HDR layer and put it on top of a standard dynamic range signal. And so what will happen is if you send that signal to a TV that doesn't support HDR, it just won't even see that layer. Nits and peak brightness, which kind of go hand in hand, nits are essentially a measurement of light output. Peak brightness really refers to uh, things such as like the glint off of a sword or off of a mirror or a reflective surface like a windshield. Basically the higher the nits, the brighter it can be and the more realistic it can appear. Torch mode is something that uh, I still see uh, all the time. Essentially this is uh, uh, the vivid picture mode. So contrast, brightness, saturation, color temperature, all of that stuff is out of whack. And the reason behind that is if you're looking at that TV right next to another TV on the shelf, your eyes are immediately drawn to something that is brighter or more colorful or has more pop. Even though it's not accurate at all, it's really to catch your eye while you're in the store. Input latency is a big one with gamers and it refers to the time it takes for a display to register a response from an input device such as a game controller. So if you have a hundred milliseconds of input latency, when you hit X or whatever button on the controller to make your character jump, at a hundred milliseconds, it's gonna take one second for that to show up on the screen, which is a long time and not good. So the lower input latency, the better. Grayscale and color temperature, which go hand in hand. Uh, grayscale basically refers to how your display handles neutral or middle gray from the darkest black point to the highest white point, while color temperature adjusts that grayscale so you can make it warmer, cooler, or more neutral depending on the setting that you have. CMS, which stands for Color Management System, this is a calibration option on most TVs these days. And if you're using a colorometer, it allows you to calibrate the primary colors, red, green, and blue, 
and the secondary colors, yellow, cyan, and magenta, so you get the most accurate color possible on your display. Gamma is the next term, and basically it's the way an image goes from black to white on your display. Uh, a higher gamma does produce a more contrasty image that can look punchier, but it's at the expense of starting to crush uh, darker details in the picture, while a lower gamma setting of something like 1.8 will uh, kind of give you a more bright picture, but it will end up washing it out as a result. EOTF is our final term in the display terminology section, uh, and it stands for Electro Optical Transfer Function, and I know it sounds super complicated, but it really isn't. It's similar to gamma for standard signals, but it's for HDR essentially. Uh, it can be more accurate as it tells the TV exactly how many nits, so how much brightness exactly to the nit to display instead of what gamma does, which is basically send a percentage of what the brightness should be to the display. So it can be more accurate. All right, moving on to audio terminology. And one of the biggest ones that I see a lot is AVR. And a lot of people don't know what this means, especially if you're getting into the hobby. And this stands for audio video receiver. Basically, it contains video routing, audio processing, and multi-channel amplifiers for powering the speakers that you connect to it. Pre-Pro is another one you'll see thrown around a lot. It stands for a pre-processor. It is similar to an AV receiver in that it typically has video routing, audio processing, but lacks the internal amplifiers that an AVR does. And then kind of piggybacking off of that, uh, talking about separates, uh, which goes hand in hand with preprocessors. Basically, it refers to having separates. So you have a preprocessor that is connected to a multi-channel amplifier. Something really popular that we see a lot, 5.1, 5.1.2, 5.2.4, 5 so on and so forth. Uh, this is a typical phrasing for how many speakers and subs you have and or how many your AV receiver supports. So in this example, 5.2.4, 5, the first number, stands for the base channels that you have. So the left, center, right, right surround, and left surround channels. The point 2 refers to how many subwoofers you have or how many subwoofers your receiver can support. So in this example, point 2 means you have two subwoofers. And point 4 refers to the ceiling or height speakers. So in this example, Point four, you have four speakers mounted on the ceilings, or maybe you have those Atmos up firing modules that are sitting on top of your other speakers. So Dolby True HD and DTS MA or Master Audio. Basically, it's audio tracks found on Blu rays and 4K UHD discs. Uh, these are lossless, meaning they are transparent to the source tracks without any quality loss at all. So piggybacking off of that, Dolby Atmos and DTS X, basically they're newer formats that support height channels. Uh, which creates a more enveloping sound, kind of a, a 360 degree sound field. So you can have sound actually coming from you overhead instead of just the conventional sound that's just kind of around you. Up mixing is another really popular one. It's typically a sound mode on your receiver that will take an input signal. So like a stereo signal, say you're listening to music, and it will take those two channels and up mix it and extract information from it to basically fill all the speakers in your room, even overhead speakers for like Dolby Atmos or DTS-X. HZ or Hertz. Uh, Hertz are basically frequencies uh, or tones that we can hear with our ears. Now this is a very, very basic explanation of what this is. Now the average human has a hearing range from 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz with any frequencies or tones above those or below those uh, being felt more so than heard. Crossover is our next term and is a very important term to know. It's basically the setting in your receiver that will route the bass to your subwoofers instead of having that bass information play on your receiver. So with a very popular crossover of 80 hertz, that's what most people recommend to use or is a good starting point, your speakers will play from 80 hertz and above, so 80 hertz to 20,000 hertz or 25,000 hertz, and then the subwoofer will play 80 hertz and below. Frequency response, which is a really big one, you'll see it on all speakers and subwoofers, and it's how they are measured in terms of performance and output. Basically, it's the range of frequencies a speaker or subwoofer can produce. So a speaker might have a frequency response rating of 40 hertz to 25,000 hertz, whereas a subwoofer might have a frequency response rating of 15 hertz to 220 hertz. DB or decibel, basically it's a measurement of the loudness of a sound typically measured with something like an SPL meter, which I will touch on in a moment. Up next, we have speaker sensitivity, and this is basically when you talk to your speakers and how easily it is to make them cry. 
No, I'm just kidding. Uh, basically, it's, it's how sensitive a speaker is to receiving amplification. So as an example, if you feed a speaker with a sensitivity rating of 88 decibels, 100 watts, and then you feed a different speaker with a sensitivity rating of 95 decibels, that same 100 watts, that 95 decibel speaker will be louder. So essentially, you'll need less amplification to drive those speakers, meaning that they are far more sensitive to receiving amplification. Optical and Toslink, which are basically the same thing, they refer to both inputs and cables. Uh, so basically it's a, a fiber optic input or cable that is solely for audio. Odyssey and room correction, and I say room correction because most brands have their own proprietary format. Some brands like Denon have Odyssey on them. Other brands like Yamaha have YPAO, which is kind of their version of room correction. And it's essentially, it's software that uses a microphone that will measure the sound in your room and try to apply EQs to each speaker and the system as a whole to really smooth out the frequency response and make it sound as natural as possible. SPL and SPL meter, which honestly go hand in hand. So SPL stands for sound pressure level. It's uh, basically a uh, measurement of how loud a sound is. And an SPL meter it is what measures that, obviously. And now an SPL meter is really an integral part of uh, home theater, especially if you're an enthusiast, because it's often used in calibration to make sure all your levels are matched, including your subwoofer. So you want all your speakers playing at the same level. You don't want your surrounds just blaring so much louder than your fronts. And here is the question of the day. What home theater term did you see when you were looking something up and really scratched your head to figure out what it meant? And when you found out, you were like, duh, that was so simple. Why didn't I think of that? Mine was WAF, W-A-F, which is wife acceptance factor, duh. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. It really lets me know that you care and that you made it to the end of the video. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one where I try to figure out how to use the three seashells. He doesn't know how to use the three seashells. <laughs>